Hello. Uh, in the next 45 minutes, I would like to introduce a project that we are actually working on. It is a set of tools to help with or to simplify network test automation. Uh, we actually are testing the network stack in the kernel in Linux, and we are developing a tool that we could use to simplify it. Right, this talk will be, will be divided into three parts. First, I will explain what honesty actually is and what it can do. In the second part, I would like to explain how it actually works, how it is implemented. And finally, I would like to say something about what actually we would like to add to the project in the future. I would like to outline the future course of our project. Right. Let's start with our motivation. The goal of our project is that we would like to actually have a library of network test scenarios that we could use to catch regressions and to verify networking code, to verify the changes in the networking code. And uh, we, uh, we would like to end up with something similar to the Linux test project, which is a kind of library with, network, with test for the Linux kernel. We only want to have it focused on networking, on networking stacks only. Uh, however, due to the nature of networking tests, there are some problems, and the biggest one, the biggest problem of network test automation is portability. And the thing is that even if you have the most simple test that you, that you can do in networking, which is a, a ping test using the ping tool, <coughs> if, you, well, if you write the, write the test like this and you would like to actually migrate the scenario to a different, different hardware, to a different network than this one, then the test will actu or can actually break because what can happen here is the IP address, the IP addressing scheme in the, in the different environment in some different network can be different. And if you hard code your IP address here, the test won't be portable. And we don't want that. Uh, you, what you can do here is you can use a parameter for the IP address, but as the test case scenario get more complicated, this is just an example of some configuration. This is actually a configuration of a bonding device in the, in the kernel. The number of parameters grows really fast. In this case, there are already four parameters that you need to change, and if the scenarios get really, really advanced and complex, the number of parameters can grow into tens or even hundreds of parameters that you would need to change when you migrate your test. So to help with these problems, we decided to develop a tool that would allow us to manage test execution on these networks. And we would like to support even like, the most advanced networking setups and configurations such as multiple combination of VLANs, bonds, and teams. And we would like this framework to provide an abstraction layer from the networking hardware so the tests are completely portable and you can migrate them without absolutely no changes to the test when you, when you migrate them. All right. Our tool, as I said, is called the Linux Network Stack Test. We are developing it in Python. Uh, it currently has roughly around 6,000 lines of code, so it's not yet that big. Uh, uh, we are still working on it, so it's under a heavy development, and we don't have any stable version of it yet, so <coughs> we kind of still are breaking the interfaces, but we already have a package in Fedora, so if you would like to tr try it out, there's a package in Fedora 18 available, and I will actually give you the link in the end of the presentation on our website where you can find all the information about this project. So this project is focused on network tests, so now let me explain what a network test actually is and how, what it is from the perspective of LNST and 
how do we work with network tests. We consider, what we con consider to be a network test is a crossover or, or an intersection of these three areas. If you would like to create an automated network test, first you need to say what infrastructure will your test require, what infrastructure will be required for the test and to describe it. Secondly, you need to configure infrastructure. A network without configuration usually doesn't work well. And finally, you need to provide some behavior for each node in the network. This is usually where the testing happens. You are testing some implementations that are, uh, that are installed or that are, that are on the nodes in the network. Right, so I will explain one of these individually now. What is important while describing infrastructure is that some machine, different machines has different properties. Some machines are stronger, they're usually the servers. Some machines are usually used as clients. So your test, your specific test, might require some set of machines. In this case, there are two servers, right? Machine A and B may be required to be servers, while these three machines can be simple clients that will actually send some requests to these servers through this testing network. The other important thing here is the actual topology of the network, because if you create a test that is, and you don't specify the network topology that is actually required in order to perform the test, then if you try to migrate it somewhere else, the network, where the network topology can be different, you never know what happens with the test and you can't, you can't really rely on that test to verify your code. So the topology is very important and we actually um, cover it in our tests. We put the topology as a part of the test. If you create a test, you need to describe the topology as in it. So that's infrastructure. When you have that, you actually need to provide a configuration for the infrastructure, which is usually only assigning IP addresses to different nodes. Sometimes you might want to do something more complex, such as set up a PON device or some teams. You can set up some routing, etc. But the important thing is that you need to take this configuration with you with the test because if you want to send a packet through network, you need to have the IP address of the target target machine, right? So if you were writing a test and if you would like to send a packet from here to here, this machine needs to be aware of the IP address of this IP address, all right? So you need to refer, you need to refer to these addresses in the test. And if you hard code them there and don't take them with you in the test, the test won't be portable at all. You will need to go to the test and change these information about the infrastructure of the network. Right, the last, the last thing is the behavior of each individual node. This is what actually specifies the Scenario, the test scenario that will be performed that, be, that will be performed over the network. In this case, there are some server, some services running on this machine. There is some email server, some imaginary email server. Uh, here is some file server, and these these client machines try to send some some requests to these servers. Right? These this machine actually tries to upload and download a file from the B machine and it uses it uses its IP address <coughs> and the important thing for the behavior is that if you want to automate these things you need to look at synchronization between different different nodes for instance it, if you would start the upload, right, if you would try to upload a file, 
even before you have started the file server, the upload wouldn't obviously work. So you need to manage synchronizations. This is sort of a weird example, but there are cases in which where the time frames are not that big and if these things are not synchronized properly, the test will again break. <coughs> so the three things were you need to specify the infrastructure, you need to provide some configuration for infrastructure, and then you need to provide the scenario that will be, that will be happening in the network. In LNST, we have a single file, a single entity, a single description that actually incorporates all these three things into one. So if you write a test with LNST, you create this XML file. We call it LNST recipe. And it is split into three basic sections, which are designed to take information about these three things. <coughs> all right. And this was something about network tests, and now let me explain how we actually work with these recipe files, how we actually execute tests that are specified within these files. LST uses two, or works with, two types of machines. The first one, the primary, the primary machine that is actually very important for LST is the controller. An LST controller is the place where you actually put your recipe, the controller will read it, and it will execute the test. And the test will be executed using the, a, a network or a lab of LNST slaves. And slaves are just dedicated test machines that are connected to the controller, and they execute commands as they receive them from the controller. All right, so what you, need to do, what you need to do at the controller is you need to put there the recipe file and you need to also provide some information about the slaves that the controller has available for testing. All right, so you can set up some test network that you plan to use for your, for your test cases and you need to say something about these computers to the controller so it can make decisions what test it will perform where. All right. The controller machine. All right, so this is maybe a little bit illustrated here how it actually works. This is, in our case, this is the test network that I showed you earlier, some sort of test network. With LNST, we call this a slave pool, which is a set of machines that some controller can use for performing tests. Here is the test network, and what is important is that the controller must be connected to each, to each slave through a different network, through an isolated network that we call a controller network. This is very important because if we use the existing infrastructure, the existing test network, and it would break, it, would, it can go down during the tests, and we would actually lose access to the, to the computers, to the slave machines, and you would need to intervene manually, go there and fix, fix the connection to the machines. So every machine in the slave pool has to have a single interface that is not part of the test and that is dedicated to the connection, to connecting the machine through to the controller. The controller will also send commands through these interfaces to the machines. It will, for instance, say, all right, now you need to run a DHCP server and or now you, now you uh, needs to send some and some packet, etc. Uh, the controller has to have a single configuration file for each comp for each machine in its slave pool, which says how many interfaces 
has the machine available for testing and where, the, where, where they, they are, where the interfaces are connected to. It says what is the IP address of the controller interface so it can access the machine through the controller network. And there are also some information about the operating system that is installed on the machine. There are some information about the hardware of the machine, maybe the drivers that uh, the drivers that the machine used to do for its network cards, etc. And the controller actually works with the recipe. The, uh, the, this is only, well, the only place where you, the controller is the only place where you need to put your recipe along with your test, along with your scripts, maybe some third party programs you have compiled in order, and you want to use them for the test. And the controller will actually take everything and it will distribute it across, across its machine pool. It will send, send your files to, to, the, to its slaves and it will use them to perform the test. Now let me explain the test execution a little more. It all starts with a recipe file that, is, that describes one or more tests and it, which goes to the controller. The controller will read the, the, will read the recipe file and it will identify the machines that are required in order to perform this test that is described by the recipe file. It will then search through its machine pool, through its slave pool, and it will select, right, these are the configuration files, the machine pool, and it will select a suitable subset of the machines of the network that are, that are suitable in order to perform the test. It will allocate the machines, it will configure them with the configuration that is again, uh, which is again specified in the, in the recipe file. It will perform the test and then it will clean everything up and put the machines back into the pool so they can be reused. I have actually prepared a demonstration, a live demonstration of LNST, so I would like to show this to you in, in more detail. Uh, I have prepared a testing lab or testing pool that I will use through this demonstration. I have it virtualized within my laptop. Uh, I prepared three machines. Here I prepared a RHEL 6 that has two interfaces connected to, to a, a Linux bridge. And I have two Fedoras connected to the same bridge as well. I will use this infrastructure to perform some tests on it. I use my laptop as the controller machine and uh, the laptop is connected through a different, through a different bridge to each of the machines so it can control it. The controller also has three files, three configuration files for each one for each machine in its slave pool and it has the recipe file that will be, that will be executed and that uh, specifies the details of the test. And what is written in, the recipe, in my recipe file that I have here, I will do this simple ping test using, using LNST. In the recipe file, what is defined, what is written in the recipe file is that this test will require the, in, an infrastructure like this there has to be one machine with two interfaces connected to the same network segment, to the same switch, and there has to be another one machine, another machine with one interface connected to the same network. And I will try to ping from this machine to here. All right. So let's go to the demonstration. Right, this is where I, ha where I keep my, my configuration files for this particular pool. There are three of them. And if I open one, as you can see, it is, 
again, an XML file, and there are some information about the slave machine that I have prepared here about the virtual machine. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the interfaces are not yet in the bond. Oh, okay. LNST will configure the bond automatically, all right? So the disk configuration files, what it says is that the controller can reach the slave machine through this IP address. This is the IP address this is, that, is assign, that is assigned to the, to the controller interface within the controller network, which was the dash line, if you remember. And here is the configuration of the two interfaces. All right, there are MAC addresses to, so the controller is able to distinguish between the interfaces, within the two interfaces. And this, this parameter, this parameter is here to indicate that the interfaces are connected to the same, to the same network segment. There are some alias that we that I have assigned to to the network segment, to which is yes, please. Uh, something which is just for this uh, test, which is inside LNST, or is it something which is defined outside the test suite? It uh, it is defined by you. You can okay. choose some name you want. The only requirement is that if uh, you, it needs to match through all the configuration files. Yeah. All right. So this was the configuration file. I can load another one, which will be quite similar. Only here, there is only one interface for the Fedora machine. Now let's have a look at the recipe file uh, with, the, with the test. The recipe file is also an XML, an XML, and there are, well, there are two sections. The first one, which starts, which starts here, is an enumeration, an, an enumeration of the machines that will be required for for the test. And each machine has some ID that we will use for referring to, to it later in the test. And e, the, there are some requirements for each machine. This is some request for an infrastructure. What it says here is that we will require a machine that doesn't need to be anything special. The only thing we want is to have two, two devices, two network two network interfaces and that these two interfaces need to be connected to the same to the same network segment these ids are in no way related to the ids that are that we use in the pool unless we will actually use some sort of matching algorithm and it will match these descriptions or these requirements to the infrastructure we have defined locally on your controller so you can take this and use it on a different controller with completely different testing environment and it will work work as good as on your own controller. The second thing that is defined in, in a machine is the configuration for its interfaces. In this case, and this is the first machine that was on, on the left, on the slide, which has which had two interfaces, connect, two interfaces connected to the same, same network. And they, in this case, they are configured as a bond. We have created, or we have some way of creating a third interface that actually will enslave the previous ones and it will configure, it will configure the new, a new interface which will be a bond from these, from the previous two interfaces, and we assign an IP address to that interface. 
Yeah, you can add some more options here. You can add an option tag here, and we support uh, some more uh, more options for bonds. But I, what I put here is some just some sim simple example. Yeah. There, there will be some default options. All right, so this is a description of this is actually a description of the infrastructure requirements for the first machine and its config and then a configuration for this machine when it will be allocated. And the same thing happens here for the second machine. Basically, there are requirements. There is a requirement for a single device on the machine, and the device is again configured. In this case, the configuration is very, very simple. The only thing we do is an assign an IP address to the interface. So this was the first section, which covers infrastructure, network infrastructure, and its configuration. The, the node, node behavior is specified within our command sequence. The command sequence is sort of a program for the whole network. Right, so what we say in the command sequence is that the controller should run or execute some command on machine one, which is the RAL six, actually, which is the f on, on the first machine that is that is defined here. So the LNST will actually go to this machine or to this machine and execute the command there. It will be a ping test, and it is some sort of module we have written to, to provide the ping functionality in Python for us in some sort of specific format. Uh, there are some options to the test. In this case, we will send 10, 10 ping packets or 10 ICMP packets with Within, with this interval, and we have defined a limit right for the successfulness of the test. So if the ratio will be lower than, than 95%, the test will fail. We also say what machine should be, should be the target of the ping request. Right, in this case, we use a XML template. We have we actually support an LST, and if you look at this more closely, this is actually a function IP which will retrieve the IP address of the second of the first interface on the second machine in this test from this test recipe. So this will be actually resolved during the processing phase of the recipe during the parsing of the recipe to this, this value, right, to this IP address. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, when, the, when is defined uh, how often will it be checked? How often? Who is scheduled these checks? If they in five minutes intervals, each five minutes, or each ten minutes? I'm not really sure. I understand your question. Uh, how often will be run this ping test? Uh, uh, who is determining this? And uh, who is the most of this? Yeah, well, this, is, this will be executed only once. Only once. Yeah, only once. Yeah, please. Uh, well, can, you, can you retrieve the information about more than just one addresses per interface? Yes. There is actually one optional parameter to this IP IP template, and if you have multiple addresses assigned to an interface, you can put like d the default is this, and you can put to inherit to retrieve another address. Or is it was that what you asked for? All right, thank you. So this is the test I. I've prepared for this demonstration, and now let's see what happens when I execute it, or when I run it. 
what I will do, I will actually run this command, which says, which is the controller implementation. And I say that I want to run this recipe. What I have done in the background, I have three machines virtualized there. And on each machine, there is a daemon. It is by default a daemon, but I have actually set up it by hand here. E each machine is ha has running this LST slave, which is the slave implementation that will actually listen for the connections from the controller and respond to them. So let's see what happens. All right, it worked. Excellent. And let me just walk you through what happened here. The controller actually loaded the recipe file and it, it read from it that there are two machines specified in the recipe file. All right, and it actually went to its pool. It went to the, it went to read these three, these three configuration files, and it decided to match the first machine from the recipe to the rel six machine from the sl from its slave pool. Which, if you look at the, at the at the infrastructure that I have here is the only option. There, there are no other machines that have two interfaces connected to the same network, all right, if you compare these two scenarios, or these two networks. Uh, then it decided to, for Fedora AP, for the second machine. In this case, it actually doesn't matter because from the perspective of this test, the machines were equivalent, so it opted for Fedora team. Then it started to connect to these machines and it started configuring them. Yes? Can you specify the distribution and the version in the tests? Uh, yep, you can do that, but I am present, what I am presenting here is sort of older version to make sure there are no bugs during the, present, during the demonstration, so it's a sort of newer feature, and I didn't want to want to risk it. Risk it. Okay. <laughs> it is already implemented, so it will be there like in four, 14 days or something like that. But I can actually show you later how does the new configuration file format looks like. So it does some configuration to the machines. It will configure the first one, then the second one. Right, then the second machine, and then it will execute the only command that is in this case in the command sequence, which is the ping test. It will execute the command on the first machine as we specified. And what you will get back from, from, the, from the slaves is that the ratio of, of the rate of this ping was 100%, so it, the test was successful. It will do some cleanup, and it will return the results of the test, which in this case is all right. The, the command sequence didn't fail, so it worked. Mm -hmm. This is actually the trick of that analysis does. Uh, these, these two environments are actually behind an abstraction layer. And the thing is that LST controller will actually match these using some backtracking algorithm. It will match the requirements on the pool. So the names you choose in, in the pool or in the test can be completely different and LST will take care of this. It will match them. You don't need to worry about it, right? So this is uh, one more slide, only to summarize what happened during the demonstration here. 
the recipe file actually specifies some, some requirements for the test scenario. The configuration files specify what the controller has available. And what the controller will do, it will try to, try to find a suitable subnetwork in, in your infrastructure. For instance, if there were another connection here, if the second machine in the test scenario, scenario had required two interfaces, the controller would say, all right, I can't perform this test using this, this pool of machines because there are not two machines with, with two interfaces. So it wouldn't actually perform the test. So the, the controller actually serves a sort of abstraction layer that abstracts the, detail, the details of the underlying network and this actually makes the tests portable to different, different environments. Right, the last point or the last part of my presentation are the features that we actually plan to, imp to put or to implement in L LNST. Uh, if you work, LNST actually supports both physical and virtual machines. And if you work in a physical environment, you cannot do anything about infrastructure. You have some wires, some machines, and LNST can't actually unplug wires from Python. So it's just given. But if you work with virtual machines, you can actually do this by cooperating with Libvirt. You can create bridges, you can attach interfaces to the virtual machines, and this Libvirt can, Libvirt can actually do this during the run, runtime of the machine. So you can actually, LNST could be actually able to rewire the whole network if you have it virtualized based on the requirements from the recipe, right? So we, this is a big, big item on our to-do list. We plan to work on it as soon as we can. The other thing that we would like to add is some drivers for different, for controlling different routers and switches. We would actually like to be able to to contact a switch or configure a switch through, uh, through, for instance, SSH or S SNMP protocol. And this could be very useful for simulating some failover scenarios. If you can control a switch, you can take down some interface to create, to create some, or to simulate some bug within the network. You can restart it, you can do whatever bad things you want to simulate some difficult network conditions. And the last thing that we have on our to-do list is a graphical user interface. We would actually like to, we, well, don't like editing XMLs that much by hand. And what we would like to do is to implement a, a graphical user interface for interactive editing of these recipe files. Uh, this, you can imagine this as a sort of a packet tracer from Cisco where you lay out different, different nodes. Uh, you can connect them with some cables and this tool would in the end generate, generate the, the recipe file for you. So you wouldn't need to worry about XML. Right. If you are interested in the project, if you have some comments or ideas, you can always contact us on our mailing list, you can get us on this IRC channel for free node. And we, actually, we also have a website where is a lot of documentation already. It is on Fedora hosted and there are lots, lots of how to's, lots of um, help. So, and you can also get the packages from there or the code. Right, this is it. This is everything from me. Thank you for coming, thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. <laughs> yes, please. Those tests you run, are those uh, separate modules in LNST, or is it some kind of generic interface towards real binaries? <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right, yes. We have actually multiple, multiple options for writing these tests. You can create your own module to LNST. Right, there's some interface from Python, some class you just uh, inherit from, 
and Honesty also supports executing commands from shell. So you can create a shell script. You can upload, Honesty will actually upload it to the slave for you automatically. And it will execute it, execute a shell. So there are various, various options for this. Right, any more questions? Wondery site uh, describes a single test or a single test or a test suite. Yeah, well, this is also depends on your choice. You can well, the recipe file actually supports uh, multiple command sequences, so you can put multiple sequences uh, into a single recipe. The thing is that y you actually should put well, uh, you can do it. Uh, as you want, but the thing that we try to stick to is one test case, one test case scenario per command sequence. So if you would like to execute multiple command sequence, multiple test cases over a single network, you can put multiple command sequences into a single recipe and execute them at once. So the application is done the, then for each command sequence or just once? Yeah. Some, some cleanup is done after each command sequence, but the IP addresses will, that are configured on top of the recipe in the configuration phase will stay there. So there is some cleanup done after the command sequences, but the ultimate, the big cleanup is done after the last command sequence. Thank you. Right, thank you. Any more questions? Right, if not, thank you again very much.